From the... I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the... I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. We see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney Competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just £2 a ticket. No purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see mckinneycompetitions.com. Yes, you maybe can't see as much, but what you can see, you get the bright lights coming across the countryside. Um, you'll have brake discs glowing red hot, exhausts probably glowing red and sending out flames. Um, so, wow. yeah, it, it's a very different thing, and, and but I think it brings another element to, to the event, and I'm really pleased that we're back with Night Stages. Um, at the time, Navigation Rally, as it was called, was, was the big thing. Um, there's two ways to describe that. Uh, one that sounds very boring and one that sounds very illegal. Uh, <laughs> but those were on Friday night rallies, uh, and again, the emphasis was on navigation, uh, and that's where I realised very quickly that my skill set, I'm not sure that it's driving, but it's certainly not navigating. Kind of like uh, Sherpas or something. Yeah, <laughs> Carry yeah that's, on the that's it. Everybody gets their photo at the top of Everest and the Sherpas are standing off to one side. But yeah, look, the co-drivers are critical. And, and I think that speaks for the health of the sport that we have over 20 of the top car that you can compete in on a start line. Uh, and, you know, then that filters right down through to the club men at the bottom who maybe only come out for one or two events of the year. But they have the car in the shed and do you know what? They put as much effort in to get ready for this event as anybody else. That was the voice of Richard Swanston, director of the Ulster International Rally, which will roar into action this weekend. But don't worry if you can't make it, um, because this year, for the first time ever, it's been streamed live, so you can enjoy it at your leisure. This is your host, Elaine Ingram, and here's Richard, who talked to me about all things rally from the Rally HQ at the Morn Country Hotel. Hello, Richard. Really nice to meet you. Um, I'm, I'm here in... Uh, the Moran Country Hotel headquarters for the Ulster Rally and it's it looks like it's pretty hectic around here right now because it's Thursday and it all kicks off tomorrow. So. Yes, um, we're now in the final stage of preparation. Uh, we'll probably have some of the British crews coming over tonight uh, and uh, we'll have a rally office open for a few hours this evening and then tomorrow we'll be opening the office at 10 o'clock and tomorrow the crews can do what we call recce so they can drive the route at road speed, make their pace notes, uh, and then tomorrow night we go into a shakedown stage, which is effectively a practice, and then the competition itself starts on Saturday morning at 8.15, leaving Newry. Right. What is the actual route? Where does it go? It starts off in Newry and it goes to Banbridge, yeah? Yes, yeah, so we, we've got a service park in Carnby and Industrial Estate here in Newry. Uh, the cars then compete on McGavin's Corner stage, which is um, just from the Sheep Bridge, really down to Love Brickland, just off the side of the A1. The cars go into Banbridge, then uh, just out to say the town centre uh, and do what we call a regroup. For let's stay there for about 10 minutes. Uh, after that, the cars go back out onto the stages just again, just behind Love Brickland, and do another two stages on their way to Newry. Uh, and then they make their way back into service before repeating that loop two more times. Right. And how long is the route altogether then? Overall, uh, there'll be 94 competitive stage miles. And how many And how many drivers have you got? At the moment, we have 107 crews starting the event. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, I mean, that must take a huge amount of coordination. I mean, you obviously have to get all the roads blocked off and all, all, all that kind of stuff. Yes, indeed. So we, we have to submit a road closing order in March uh, prior to the event. It's always in March. Um, so we really had to commit to this event very early on, which was difficult this year, given yeah. the, the uncertainties that there are. Um, we, we would normally also rally normally runs in August. Yeah. Back in February, March, we just didn't feel August would work for us because uh, really once we apply for a road closing order we would be aiming to do our first run of what we call PR so we call it every house on the stages explain to them that we're closing their roads um, really every house you have to call to every house yeah we have to call to so but back in sort of February March time COVID was bad um, and, and we didn't really feel it was right uh, to be putting extra people out into those areas so we took a decision to move the date of our event uh, the motorsport calendar in Northern Ireland is hectic, so trying to find a weekend that would suit, um, not conflict with rallies either here on the mainland or indeed in the south of Ireland was difficult, but we've got this date, um, which is different for us, but look, the, the weather in August is variable, so 
I don't think weather will be as big an issue as maybe what we thought. Yeah, because uh, I was going to ask you about that, what's the condi- road conditions, because... But it isn't that cold, so we're, you're kind of lucky. No, it could have went, I suppose, two ways. Uh, and it stayed pretty warm for us, um, probably unseasonably warm. Uh, the roads, the stages are mucky because it has been wet. And, of course, you have leaves down. Um, uh, although the advantage of moving the date was the Ulster Rally was always famous for night stages. So we, we would have run two or three competitive stages on a Friday night, late into the night, and then started early again on Saturday morning. Um with a switch to a one-day format in August, we weren't able to do night stages. But now we're in November, uh, we were able to to run dark stages. So Shakedown itself on Friday night will be in the dark, and then we expect the majority of drivers on the last three stages um, to be in the dark. That sounds absolutely terrifying. I don't like driving in the dark at the best of times. Can you imagine being in a well, riding car? <laughs> these guys, I suppose, they're driving um, on, on pace notes. So they have a navigator or a co-driver with yeah. them and he's describing the road ahead. So really they should be driving to the notes. And some will tell you they go quicker in the night time because they can't see things that might scare them. Oh God. <laughs> so, you know, if they're driving on the notes, really being able to see things um, isn't as important. It, it well, does you're make still a driving on notes. You still need to you know, see where you're going and you still need to be driving because... Well, you know. the, the, the lights these guys have on the front of the car are, well, incredible. Don't look at them. Um, you know, they're all, well, a lot of the top crews are using LED lamps um, which are projecting spot beams away out in front. Um, so, look, it, it's part of the challenge. The Ulster Rally, as I said, traditionally had night stages and we're, we're fairly excited now to be able to um, while not late at night anymore, certainly in the dark. Um, and the, the night rally, and it's, it's different. It, it, it's Yes, you maybe can't see as much, but what you can see, you get the bright lights coming across the countryside. Um, you'll have brake discs glowing red hot, exhausts probably glowing red and sending out flames. Um, so, wow. yeah, it, it's a very different thing. And, and But I think it brings another element to, to the event. And I'm really pleased that we're back with night stages. What about spectators then, when you're talking about night stages? Yeah, look... Is, is um, that um, dangerous? Or? Well, look, rallying, the slogan is motorsport is dangerous. And yeah. There's no doubt about it. Um, I have a team of people working on the safety of this rally. And uh, their sole aim is to ensure that this event is safe 100% for everybody involved, be that officials, marshals, competitors, and indeed spectators. Um, so we spend an awful lot of time developing a safety plan which details every junction on the route uh, and details what steps we need to take to block that off and where we can have spectators and where we can't um, and uh, then the, the guys, their stage commanders are, are out at the minute on the stages um, preparing them, putting in the posts, getting ready to tape it off and block it off to make it as safe as possible so look, those areas that the spectators are allowed in they're safe regardless of light or dark. Um, and we would encourage all spectators attending the event to please follow the instructions of marshals. Uh, they're there for your safety and to ensure the safe running of the event. Yeah, it's a, a far cry from years ago. And I know that like, you know, rally driving and, you know, motor car racing in general, the safety standards, obviously, a lot of times it's due to, you know, tragic circumstances, but... Um, the safety standards have vastly improved. It used to be a case because I I know you know, I used to follow the circuit of Ireland a wee bit, and um, you know you'd just be you'd just be at the side of the road and you know anything could happen. There was no no such thing as marshals or if there were there were few and far between. But how how did that come about? The changes. Yeah, look, unfortunately, the changes have come about due to tragedy, um, yeah. as is so often the way. Um, we, we in the Ulster Rally before my time even really pioneered the safety plan um and we as i said you know we spend hours days weeks um developing that and ensuring that they anywhere where we see there's a risk of a car going off uh, then we have that blocked and no spectators are allowed and uh, motorsport uk the governing body sets down criteria as well of where a junction must be blocked back to uh, well, minimum distances, you know, if, if we think, see fit to override that because of a particularly fast approach or something like that, you know, we will move people further back. Um, so, you know, we we take pride in our safety plan and we do it to the best of our ability, but we totally rely on the cooperation of spectators and the public 
Um, we, before the competing cars go onto the stage, there is a train of course cars and safety cars which go through. And their job, the first cars will go through and check the stage is set up properly. Uh, the last sort of five cars are safety cars and they go through to ensure that people are not standing where they shouldn't be. Uh, and they will stop if necessary and they will ask marshals, or sorry, ask spectators to move. Um, and if they felt they weren't getting the response and they felt the people were in a safe stage, at least it would delay the start of the stage. But it has happened before where entire stages have just been cancelled simply because spectators are not in a place where we're happy to run competition cars past them. Um, and we really don't want to get to that to that stage. You know, We want to put on a spectacle here. Uh, we've got drivers coming here to compete and we want to give them a competition. Um, and we've got spectators coming to watch and we don't want to ruin it for them. So I would ask that everybody please, please do stand in a safe place and listen to the marshals. Yeah, has that, has that happened much where you've had to like, you know, stop a stage or at least delay a stage? Or yeah, anything? I've been at rallies lost? where stages, entire stages have been lost, um, where, where simply spectators have turned up en masse and been totally uncooperative. Um, and, and there isn't anything you can do, I suppose, they're on a public road. No, we, we have police liaison working with the event um, and, uh, you know, where, where necessary we can dispatch uh, police to assist us if required. Um but to be honest, if it's getting to that point, you you do have a time slot or a time schedule to maintain and uh, running too far out of that just uh, ruins everything after it. So sometimes you do have to make the unfortunate decision to, to cancel the stage. It's not something, thankfully, we've had to do a lot on this event um, and it's not something we certainly want to start to do. Um, so you know we, we put a lot of effort into making sure the areas are clearly marked and uh, hopefully everybody obeys them. Would that would it generally be in in scenarios like that? Would it generally be people that are just over enthusiastic, or would it be people that are just coming out to, you know, um, out spite to ruin the event or something like that? No, I it... wouldn't say nobody deliberately comes to ruin the event. No, um, sometimes alcohol plays a part, uh, unfortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, sometimes people just when there's a big group of them, there's a boost crowd get, mentality oh, comes yeah. in, and and you know they 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 don't. They don't want to move and they think they're in the best place. But uh, no, sorry, we, we will always run a safe event and that has to come first. Yeah. Well, with these roads now, the roads around here, the roads that you're, the course is on, um, you map out that route very, very carefully. Um, and what sort of speeds are you talking about trying to get up? And I, I'd say around here, it's, it's just fantastic territory for, for events like this. Yeah, fantastic roads um, for us, uh, really, in this area. Um Speeds, uh, we have to run the stage at uh, about 75 miles an hour average. Um, so we will introduce uh, steps. If the roads were too open and too wide, we would have to introduce what we call a chicane, generally made out of bales, to slow the cars down, to make them break and navigate a chicane and then back up to speed. We don't like doing that. It's not really natural, you know, It's, it's um, but... Unfortunately, there are places where we just have to do that, uh, particularly if you're approaching a very, very fast corner or, or sorry, a very corner after a very fast section of straight. We might want to put in a chicane somewhere down the street just to knock off that um, top speed a bit. Top speed, the cars are probably getting to 120, 130 miles an hour. Wow. Um, but I think more impressive about a rally car is how quickly it'll get to that sort of speed. Yeah. It's not really about, you know, these are small, narrow country roads. There's not really a lot of scope for getting much more top speed so really the key to getting a good time is getting up to speed very quickly and carrying that speed around the corners so tire choice speeds in the, yeah. the, the better tires that you can pick for the conditions that the more grip you'll have the faster you can go around the corner and and really that's that's where the time is made up but that's the beauty of, of rally driving road rally driving because you know you're facing into you know every road is different obviously so that's the excitement of it you're not going around a track you know what i mean well you're... that's that's right yeah i mean that certainly is part of the appeal for me um is the variation that the, the crews will get you know even not just from one stage to the next but within a stage you know it could start with very grippy tarmac there could be patches that have been repaired with a very shiny smooth tar particularly in the wet uh, and then next section you go on it could be quite rough cut up gravelly um not to mention the mud that'll be pulled out um yeah. by you know the guys like to try and take a line through a corner the stage the hedges are wet so that brings out a lot of mud onto the road so, so it's different for everybody it depends on where you are in the, in the very much where so. you're leading off yeah very much so uh, that's why there's a lot of uh drive in the guys to try and um get a high running order 
because the roads obviously are slightly cleaner, but then they're only slightly cleaner on the first loop. Yeah. After that, it's it, a level it, it really field. levels up yeah. a bit, you know. So, um, yeah, I think tire choice on Saturday will be critical. And what way does it? What way does it start off now? How does? How do you? Um, do you give them different times depending on their positions and the you know where they are? Yeah, yeah. So once we get our entries all in, we then seed them, um, which is where we try and put them on order roughly who we think is fastest down to the slowest, uh, and that's done for reasons that uh, the cars then set off at one minute intervals into a stage and you want the, you don't want them catching the car in front. So yeah. yes, they might go a bit quicker, but certainly we've designed it that they don't take a minute out of the person in front um, because it's not like circuit racing where you try and go past somebody. Yeah, uh, They're really competing against the clock. Um, and it's the fastest time. Yeah, she wouldn't be able stage. to get past anybody on those some of those roads anyway. No, no, very difficult, very difficult. Um, if so, so people do catch, generally, if the car in front is a problem, um, and then you're really into relying on driver courtesy to. I was going to say, would they move over? Oh, if yeah, they had an especially issue. if they had a problem. You know, the, at the end of the day, if they have a problem and their their stage time is going to be badly affected, pulling over for a few seconds to let somebody pass shouldn't impact them. So it would be common courtesy to do that. Um, and good sportsman like uh, behavior you know um so yeah that, that would really be the only time that they would catch the car in front um but yes yeah, so they go off one minute intervals and basically compete against the clock and uh, the clock stopped at the at the end of the stage and then they can compare and really the winner at the end of the day is the one with the lowest kilometer of time over all the stages and uh, you, you get a lot of you know riders from internationally from everywhere where would be what, what sort of countries are we talking here that it, that, that um, rally driving is most popular? Um, yeah, all of, very healthy across sort of the whole of the British Isles. Um, there'd be a fairly strong European Championship as well. Uh, America actually has, has got a, a healthy rally championship too. In the past, we've enjoyed a number of, um, well, I'd say Americans, but as well as Irish people who've emigrated to America many years ago and, uh, and still come back for the rallying. Uh, unfortunately, with, with COVID and, and I suppose travel restrictions, um, this time no the, Americans, the, yeah, no Americans. But the majority of the drivers are um, sort of British, Irish, Welsh, you know, British covered it, but you know, Welsh, Scottish, English. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, international travel this year is is a bit more difficult. But yeah, look, great entry list. Um, the we have the British Rally Championship and the British Junior Rally Championship to be decided on our event. Um, and there will be a lot of competition between the, the two guys at the top of the British Championship, uh, Matt Edwards and Oshin Price. Uh, and then the British Junior Rally Championship is local interest. Um, we have William Crichton uh, nice. from Moira and uh, uh, Eamon Kelly as well from, uh, from Ireland. They're both competing for the Junior Crown. So... You know, it, it's great to have those battles finishing on our event, um, and it'll be uh, it'll be a good finish ramp on on Saturday night. Do we have? Do you have many Irish um, winner? Have we had many Irish winners in the past, or are any um, Irish drivers that have you know stood out? Yeah, um, we, we certainly have. I mean, um, Bertie Fisher, Austin McHeel, uh, Jimmy, oh, Austin well, McHale, yeah, yeah, you know, Austin McHale. <laughs> yes, uh, you know those guys. Back, uh, I suppose, late 80s, early 90s, really, when, when they were uh, around um, and who all won it a number of times. Um, moving forward, uh, sort of more recently then, you've got Eugene Donnelly, uh, Tim McNulty. Uh, and, you know, yes, there's been some great names out there who, who have won this event. Um, most recently, of course, in 2019, the event was won by Craig Breen who uh, was uh, doing some select drives for Hyundai World Rally Team that year, and he continued with that, and he's now secured a seat at M Sport World Rally Team for a full season next year. So he is competing at the pinnacle of the sport um, and a previous winner of this event. Get ready to shake up summer with the Get Active ABC Sunshine Fill Programme for kids and families. Get set for land-based adventure at our summer schemes, or why not get adventurous and maybe get wet at our Splashtastic Water Sports Summer Programme. There are so many things to do, and all we need is you. See getactiveabc.com slash summer for all the details.
rally driving in Ireland is you know, a long, there's a long tradition, you know, going right back. I mentioned the Circuit of Ireland er, er, earlier there. Um, why, what do you think it is about rally driving that's so, so, there's so much of an appeal for it all around Ireland, but particularly in Northern Ireland? I know the roads are brilliant for it, but just what, what do you think it is about it that we just love our cars? <laughs> yeah, that's a difficult question. Um, our, yeah, Ireland has, has, yeah, as you say, you know, a huge following for rally, and, and it'd be my opinion that they organise and run some of the best events in the world. Uh, and I think a lot of drivers would agree with that. Um, as a country, you know, back when World Rally cars were competing on sort of national events, if you like, you know, we had a colossal number of World Rally cars here compared to any other country. Uh, you know, those Subarus, Toyotas, um, and, and, and many others. And it was amazing. And th- that has continued now, you know, we look at our, you know, the, the top rally car that people can buy these days and compete in is, um, I suppose, an R5, what's called an R5 car. Now they've just changed their name in their Rally 2 cars. Um, and, you know, I think of t- over 20 on the start list. And, and I think that speaks for the health of the sport that we have over 20 of the top car that you can compete in on the start line. Uh, and, you know, then that filters right down through to the club men at the bottom who maybe want to come out for one or two events of the year. But they have the car in the shed and do you know what? They put as much effort in to get ready for this event as anybody else. Um, and, uh, you know, we didn't get the Irish Tarmac Championship, which we'd normally be around if it wasn't able to run this year. Uh, so it made us a wee bit nervous about entries and how they would run. But um, any event that's run, so the Cork 20 would be another big rally in the south, run with a massive entry. We're running with a, what I consider to be a massive entry. Um and I think that shows the, the pent-up demand there is for guys to get yeah. back out at the sport uh, and shows that the support has, has weathered, the, 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 sorry, the sport has weathered the pandemic and uh, I think it'll be back with a bang, really, in 2022, conditions permitting. Yeah. How, how important is the car? You were talking about the different cars there now. You know, there's the age-old story about, you know, the age-old question of, is it the car, is it the driver, is it a bit of both? Is it, you know, how important is it? Is it, is it the person with the best car wins or... You know that, or is that more of a Formula I mean, One question? I, no, I mean to to a point. Um, so right now, the I suppose I can't say the top car. The top car, yeah, that people can buy is what's known as a Rally Two, and they are uh, Fiestas, um, Polos, etc. And they are designed to a spec, and so they should all be there or thereabouts the same. Um, now, each manufacturer will work very hard at ensuring their car is slightly better, be it through setup or chassis. But in general, they're making the same power um, and that should be a relatively level playing field, which does then bring it down to the crews. The co-driver, we always talk about the drivers, but the co-driver... Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I was going to get to the co-driver. Very important. Um, yeah. Very important. Not always listened to, but very important. Um, you know, and so they're down to the crew, very much so, and... Tactics also, um, tire choice can make or break a day. Yeah, you were talking about tire choice. Yeah, that seems so, to be a real thing, especially you know, in the conditions that we have. Here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we have, you know, broadly speaking, there's there's slicks and there's wets, and uh, with conditions at the minute, I would say roads are probably starting to dry up. So you might be thinking slicks, but there'll be an awful lot of places where the water just can't dry up, and uh, either it's running out of a ditch or it's under trees, um, or we could get more rain. And uh, that's when you want your wets. But of course, you can only pick one tire for each loop. Um, and so that's the gamble you take. So it's which which, which tire is going to work best over the most? Um, uh, and of course, if you're on a slick tire and you come into a very wet section, you got to watch out. Well, I suppose it swings and roundabouts. You have to either you have to yeah. weigh up which is the most important thing for that particular stage. That's it. Yeah, yeah, uh, very much so. And you know that that can change through the day. You know, a shower rain coming in. Maybe the guys leave service. It's happened many times before. The weather's looking good. The stages are drying up. They put on a slick tire, leave service, and five minutes later, Northern Ireland shower comes, oh. and all of a sudden. That's what they say. If you don't like the weather in Ireland, just wait five minutes. That's it. Yeah, it changes. <laughs> so you know, then the guys are out on potentially the wrong tire, but the guy who's running further down the field isn't out of service yet, and he sees the rain and he says, "Well, I'll just put my wet tires on." And yes. So he, you know, so, so there's look, so many variables. Absolutely, and you know, I think that's what makes rallying different. 
uh, and maybe a bit more exciting um, uh, for, for me anyway. You know, it's that variability and then the changes that can happen. Yeah, and you're ta- the, the co-drive, the co-pilot now, um, how important is it? I mean, would they ever feel like they were, you know, not in the limelight? They're just as important. I mean, I, I, you could even argue that they're more important. They're the ones that are actually designing the, I mean, you see them there in the cars and they are the ones that are telling the driver and the driver is basically sitting there. <laughs> that's, that's it, yeah. So they don't you know, get the same sort of credit. I, I, absolutely not. You know, they, they really don't. But, kind of like uh, Sherpas or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's it. Yeah, everybody gets their photo at the top of Everest and the Sherpas are standing off to one side. But yeah, look, the co-drivers are critical. Um, they, they really are. Uh, and you know they'll they'll do a lot of preparation with the driver preparing the pace notes um and then going out and uh, and i suppose managing the driver you know and, and trying to keep them uh, you know I, i've done a wee bit of driving myself but yet a red mist and uh, it can make so you, they like a caddy in some ways well yeah they, you know they're, they're there to guide you they're there to support well yeah to, to keep the driver right and you know and sometimes if something goes a bit wrong the driver maybe throws a head up and pushes a wee bit too hard and the co-driver's there you'll hear them sometimes saying just calm down yeah We're okay <laughs> you know because whenever you're in a rally car sometimes you think it's the worst thing in the world but sometimes the co-driver can just say a good co you know will say just calm down we're okay yeah. you know let's get to the end of the stage and, and you know we'll work on it so yeah the, the co-drivers are critical you know they're doing all the timing uh, to make sure the driver gets to each um, checkpoint or control at the right time because if they check in early they can get a penalty if they check in late they can get a penalty um, and no one wants to no one wants to see the results decided by penalties um, and yeah. you know we want to see it decided over the, the competitive stages and the times at the set so yeah co-drivers very very important yeah would you ever see co-drivers uh, is it certain it's obviously a certain skill set that they have but would you would you ever see them switching over to driving or or vice versa, so drivers um, switching over to co-driving. Is it something that transfers or is it a completely different thing altogether? Could, yeah, there are some or who, is that a who question? have sort of, you know, <laughs> swapped over. But um, I think generally you find what you're good at and, and you yeah. stick to it. Um, you know, uh, they're two very different skill sets. Um, and that's not to say co-drivers can't be quick drivers, but generally I suppose they find what they like and uh, yeah. they, they stay and do, and do that but um, yeah no, you, you, you can get them they're, they're well you know they can swap but no most tend to find a, they find what they're, they enjoy and what they like and what they're good at and, yeah. and stay in that yeah so you said you did a bit of driving yourself where did you where have you done or or what have you done and yeah what... I suppose my interest in motorsport um, started uh, I guess following rallying and then more when I went to Queens there's a, a motor club at Queens and um, at the time, navigation rallying, as it was called, was was the big thing. Um, there's two ways to describe that. Uh, one sounds very boring, and one that sounds very illegal. Uh, <laughs> but those were on Friday night rallies, uh, and again, the emphasis was on navigation, uh, and that's where I realised very quickly that my skill set. I'm not sure that it's driving, but it's certainly not navigating. Nice. Um, uh, so uh, yes, uh, I started competing on the night navigations and. Uh, progressed then on to what we call Targa rallies um, which are run on sort of private ground like private lanes generally each test maybe only half a mile maybe a maximum of a mile long something like that um, and yeah I did that for a few years broke a lot of cars and uh, bones no no no, no <laughs> nothing serious just just uh, just cars just mechanical failures and uh, I suppose around that time, the second youngster arrived and time became tight. And I just said, you know what, if, um, I'll, I'll stop for a while. And uh, I then ended up falling into organising a bit. Uh, so I did a bit on the Circuit of Ireland uh, when it was a European Championship round. Um, and I worked on quite a few of those. And then I've done bits and pieces for the Ulster. And then I'm, I done, I'm now uh, event director, second year for the Ulster. Yeah. Uh, so yeah it's a big commitment in terms of time you know we really start for our august event we'd be starting well, our first meeting sort of november december time so we'll we'll be a wee bit late now we'll need to give people a break we'll be starting early next year really to, to look then for an august event um so yeah big big time commitment but yeah the, the organization's a different element different side of it but yeah it's very enjoyable do you miss the buzz at all do you miss the buzz of the do you ever wish you were out there Ach, yeah, of course, um, of course I do. Uh, it would take a lot less time off me, that's for sure. But 
at the minute, no, I'm, I'm sort of happy. Now. But I, I get a buzz here. Um, yeah. You know, today, Thursday, things are picking up. Tomorrow, there'll be a real buzz. It'll be frantic. And then Saturday, um, you know, it'll be running everywhere, checking things are okay, and I'm happy with things. And that's just my nature. Things will be fine, but I just... Do you get to watch there. any of the racing? I mean, obviously, when you're busy coordinating everything and all that, are you just stuck in H- HQ? Um, um, I have a, a brilliant team here who will be based in HQ and who will run the rally effectively. Um, I don't. So the clerk of the course is the man who's in charge of the the competition on the day, and he he has the final say. Um, my role, I suppose, is more looking at the financial side of the rally, um, uh, and I do bits and pieces f- for him to try and take the load off. Uh, but he he has ultimate responsibility, and I have a team here in the hotel over the weekend who will run the rally. I just drive around, get in the way, annoy people, and, uh, <laughs> and then hand out some trophies at the end, really, is, is what I do on the day. You know, I just, those people are, are brilliant at running an event, so I just stay out of the way and let them at it. Yeah. Is, 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 is it um, very expensive for people to get involved in rally car driving? I mean, I suppose, are you probably talking about when you get into the top end of things, but just in general for people who want to get involved in the sport? Yeah, I suppose it depends. Yeah, if you want to get into the the marshalling side, the, the support side, the organisation side, yeah, it's, it's entirely, totally free. Um, but yes, if you want to get in as a competitor, there's no doubt there is a cost. Um, and it's probably, in terms of a sport, yes, at the, at the higher end of the scale. Um, it all depends really on which car you want to compete in and uh, be competitive in. You know, the, the top rally two cars I was just talking about you know you're into hundreds of thousands yeah you probably um, need sponsorship for that kind of thing though is there sponsorship available yeah well 107 cars on the start line and I would say most of them will have a different name written on them you yeah. know um so yes uh, look, a lot of people have their own business and I do it through that a lot of people have other businesses who are, who are willing to support them I mean event as an event we, we rely on our sponsors um to help us financially uh, this year we're very pleased to have Modern Tires on board as a as the main sponsor, yeah. um, and that's that's been a, a great boost for the event. It's also provided us with a service park, um, and uh, we also enjoy support from ancillary sponsors. So we have uh, Crichton's uh, store in Finnicky. Um, we have uh, KDM who support us, providing us with equipment, etc. Um, we have uh, used cars NI as well, uh, so. You know, I'm not. Of course, we can't forget uh, Arma City, Banbridge, and Craigavon Council. You know, who 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 support us, and, and without those people, there simply wouldn't be an event. It just wouldn't be financially viable. So, yeah, sponsorships are definitely a big part of the sport. And this year, you're going, um, you're streaming it for the first time. Yes, so that that must have been that's that, that's a huge thing. Do you do you worry that it might um, this might people might decide they want to sit in their armchairs and watch it rather than come out and. It's a different experience, I suppose. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. It's very different. Um, and I suppose, yes, we might lose people from the stages. But at the same time, we're, we're trying to open the sport up to a new audience. Um, people can watch it all around the world. Absolutely, yeah. And I suppose in my years in, in rally, and I would see the, the hedge support from the, the spectators is probably dwindling slightly. Um, and maybe that's just because the generation who was really into rally and has... I suppose, like myself, moved on. You know, I've now got a wife, children, and uh, saying bye bye at six o'clock on a Saturday morning to go and stand in the hedge. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it it doesn't always work. You know, kids need to be running activities and yeah. and um, and all the rest of it. So, uh, I suppose by streaming it, it gives people another way to watch it. Uh, we also sort of try and promote the service park as a good chance to come in and see the cars. Uh, and get around them of course it's buggy friendly as well which you know is handier to convince the family to go to service for an hour and hour and a bit rather than go out uh, on a stage um so i don't think it'll take away and i think it'll add very much um uh, and i'm really excited to i'll probably not get to see much myself during the event um but it's it's set up you know with a studio with live camera feed from out on the stages um we'll have in-car camera feeds as well uh, and interviews um, coming from service parks so uh, I'm really excited I look forward to after the event when I get a bit of peace to sit down and watch it uh, and see what it was like but uh, I think it'll be a, a great job yeah and next year you've got big plans next year I mean the Ulster uh, you know the competition is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I know obviously Covid was a huge challenge but at the same time you had time to 
it gave you time to put all these new measures in place. And next year, next year, what are the plans afoot for next year? Yeah. Um, so plan next year is to return back to our oldest state. Yeah. Um, we uh, the Irish Tarmac Championship is um, looking to get going again. The, the first round is the Killarney Historic Rally, which is actually uh, next weekend. And so that's the first round of that championship. And we hope then Galway, etc. will run in, in February and continue through the season. I'm fairly confident that uh, next year is going to be a brilliant year in Irish Rally. I think there's a lot of demand, um, a lot of cars here, uh, and uh, I think the championship will be very healthy. So, yeah, it, it'll be... I'd say we'll take a rest until after Christmas. Um, give people a break we normally get it from sort of September time we get a break but it'll be a bit shorter this year but uh, I think the crew the team here is very enthusiastic to get back at it and uh, put plans in place yeah for, for an August 2022 event and uh, finally your um, is is I know you're going to be biased here but is Ulster the best place for rallying in the world <laughs> or have you got any other favourites that you'd like to tell us about <sighs> Yes, I mean, the Ulster Rally, really, it's the only one to talk about, isn't it? Um, <laughs> no, look, I, I do think the Ulster does, um, I think we, we as organisers, you know, we, we work very hard um, to put on a good event. And uh, we we hope the drivers and the, the spectators feel the same, that they get a good event. That That is our aim. Um, across Ireland, look, there's motor clubs who put on fantastic events, you know, Killarney probably would have been one of my favourites to go and spectate at. Uh, you know, we've driven down to Malls Gap on the evening, parked up, slept in the back of the Jeep for a couple of hours, and then up the next morning to watch. Um, and Killarney, I would say, is the probably... The Donegal Rally was one, one I remember I, well. When the I Donegal was I was going to go to next. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, the entry they get, everybody wants to do Donegal, and there's a reason, and that's the stages. They are yeah. fantastic. Um, and look, there's others I haven't mentioned, the Cork 20, the West Cork, the Galway Rally, um, all... But top. Ireland in general is... Ireland in general, I mean, I don't think anybody runs a bad event in Ireland, um, I really don't, uh, and of course Northern Ireland, then you have the Northern Ireland Championship, the local scene is, is, is healthy as well, uh, a lot of good rallies in that, you know, Kirkstown Motor Club run a fantastic event, Mid Antrim Motor Club, um, Magerfeld, all, again, all great, great people, and... and I have to say, I'm so lucky that it's the Northern Ireland Motor Club that run, run and promote the Ulster Rally. And we have people from all the other motor clubs in Northern Ireland who are on our team running our rally. And that's what makes our rally, is the people organising it. Um, and, and I'm lucky to say that I have, in my opinion, the best team available. And, uh, and I'm very proud of them all. The event, the hours they put in and the event that they put on, um, I think is top notch. So you're sticking at this for the foreseeable future. You have no no plans to well, step down. I don't know about that. I think <laughs> uh, I think maybe I need a rest too. Um, you know, uh, things are busy for me at home at work, etc. So I'll maybe uh, try and take a back seat for for a wee while here. Um, and you but, say that now, but by next year you'll be back uh, and no, rare no. to go uh, again. Uh, yeah, you're right. I do say that every year, but no, I think this year I do need to just take a wee step back. Um, and just let somebody else run for a while. But I think we've the, the basis here for a great event. You know, I don't think it'll be hard to pick up and keep running forward. And that's really what we always want to do. You know, we don't want to stand still. We want to keep going and add new things. This year, you know, it's the live streaming. Um, and I, I'm confident it'll run very well and, and could well become, you know, a, a regular feature. And then, you know, we'll be looking for the next thing. What can we add to, you know, uh, to, to make the event different and better. And I suppose it's keeping on moving with the times. I suppose that's important. Well, that's it. You know, you want to attract the championships. Um, you want to give them, their drivers, a challenge, uh, you know, and, and something different. So, yeah, we'll always have to look at things. And, uh, you know, we regularly move around the country. We generally spend sort of two, three years in an area, and then we move on. So every three years, the stages change completely. Yeah. Um, we do try and vary it up a wee bit even between the next times. year will they be changing or will they be still here uh, we don't know yet um, no. that's probably a decision I'll, I'll get this event over us and then we'll we'll regroup and sit down and, and have a think about things we, we really don't have any concrete plans as yet um, so yeah we'll be sitting down very soon in the new year and, uh, and looking at that and seeing what our options are um, certainly you know It'll partly depend on sponsorship, there's no doubt. Uh, um, but this area is great. There's some great stages and there's plenty of stages around here. We were planning for our 2020 event to change the stages a bit. Um, but obviously we had to cancel that. 
uh, and uh, with COVID and the risk to the event still in the early part of this year, we didn't want to put in hours and hours of work preparing new stages that could well then not run. So we stuck to the, the, the 2019 plan and, and run with that. Um, just take some of the risk out of it. You know, as I say, these are all volunteers running this sport, running this event. Um, and to ask them to sit down and put in hours of more work that then potentially might not even happen yeah, yeah you know I, I would feel bad doing that so yeah we took it we said no we'll run the same again so a lot of the stuff was already in place and then that took a bit of the workload off and the stages look the weather will change them um two years have passed that'll change them uh, and so no doubt they'll offer they'll still offer a massive challenge to to every driver even if they've been here before yeah any predictions or you know you keeping keeping quiet on that Given this is your last year, you can say whatever you like. Yeah, um, I don't know. I I think the two guys at the top, Matt Edwards and Oshin Price, they're going for the British Championship. They're both hungry for it. I think it'll be a rally of attrition. I think we'll have a lot of guys maybe don't make the finish. And uh, so they must be really sitting wondering right now how to play this. Do they go all out of the attack at the start and try and build a lead and then defend it? Or will they just be cautious on their first loop, see what the stages are like? You know, um, I wouldn't want to be making that decision. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I leave that to those guys. But uh, no, all I want is, is as many crews as possible safely over the finish ramp at the end and uh, all crews safe uh, and all marshals, all volunteers, all spectators safe at the end of the day. That's my aim. And uh, whatever whatever the stages decide in terms of winners, that that's fine with me. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll get an Irish winner though somewhere along the line. <laughs> yes, look, Callum Devine there is is third in the road, and Callum is a very quick young driver. Um, and do you know what? He he could really throw in an upset. Um, and he's not the only one. You know, there's plenty more down the list. Uh, so we could well have an Irish driver. Um, if not on the top step of the podium, I expect to see an Irish driver on the podium. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. All right, well, thanks a million, Richard. I hope it all goes really well and the weather stays relatively, you know, dry and what, what, the kind of weather you want anyway. Yeah, no, dry. At the end of the day, I, you know, 500 odd marshals out on the stages and I want them to get a dry day as well because that just makes it all the more enjoyable. So, yeah, for, for the marshals uh, and, and all the other volunteers out and about, I hope it stays dry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Richard. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed listening to Richard there. And hearing all about rally driving really brought it right back to me. And I, for one, will certainly be watching. Remember to keep getting all of your news from Arma I, and I hope you join us next time for our podcast. From the... I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the... I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. We see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney Competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just £2 a ticket, no purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see mckinneycompetitions.com.